evening. This is Balthazar from downstairs. Now, if you are like me and you're a big fan of fun podcasts, you could consider helping out Fist Shark Marketing for less than the price of the bone dust of a righteous man. You could go and give them a few dollars here and there, and it'll help them to create this podcast and stop investigating what we're doing in the basement. Just go to patreon.com slash Fist Shark, or go to their website, Fist Shark. Shark.com. Go there. I compel you. Conrad, Caitlin. Mm-hmm. Promise me before I tell you this that you won't get mad. But I, I can't. Um... You see, when you say something like that, I just get mad automatically because I know that you know that I know that you know that I know that I'm going to get pissed off about it. It's a it's a valid default state. I won't I won't lie. I don't blame you, uh, but. I've got to tell you what happened, and you're going to get mad, and you're going to blame me. So why don't you just say you're going to get mad rather than making this, like, I mean, why even ask? All just, right. We don't need to play right. games here, Jim. Let's just okay. carry on. We for, we I'm, forgive. We forget sometimes. I'm not, I'm not going to pussyfoot around, okay? I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm not going to tread on eggshells. I'm not going to give you the roundabout. Okay, I'm not going to play Snakes and Ladders with your heartstrings, okay? I'm going to get down to brass tacks. Direct, straight to the point, on point with the issue. Okay? Good. No procrastinations, no putting it off. Going to just accomplish the goal, get in there, in and out, hit it and quit it. Exactly. Down with the dirty funk. Exactly. I'm ready. Right, you know how... You two have cars. Right. Mm Mm-hmm. And you know how you two like your cars? I like my car very much, yes. Cars are a thing that I enjoy driving. And you know how when you drive your cars to work, you park the cars outside in the parking lot? Right. That's correct. I have my space for my car. So before we... Before we proceed, you would admit you put the cars there. So I can only be held partially responsible, because when Miley Cyrus is in the parking lot with an idea, she's going to play with the cars that are in the parking lot. And I might direct her away from my car, and towards the cars of others. So when she turns up with a hempen sack full of live bats... Because she's had another one of her scientific ideas for improving the world, some people's cars, specifically their gas tanks, are going to get filled with bats. Uh, Your cars are full of live bats, is what I'm saying. Right now, my car in the parking lot has a gas tank full of bats. Mostly the gas tank. Um, Some of the more industrious bats have escaped and are just flapping around inside. Okay. They nest quickly. That's one thing I've learned from bats. Um, They nest quickly, and uh, some of them really like the taste of gasoline. Uh, But that's besides the point. I'm not here to give you a lecture about bats. I'm here to tell you about the bats that are filling up your cars as we Uh, speak. Okay, Jim, hold, hold on, hold on. I feel like you're missing a key point of your story here. I'm not understanding the part... Where they get there. My, Miley comes up to you. You're directing. Uh, how did this happen? Right. Now hear me out. Okay. Because this isn't my fault. Miley Cyrus got it into her head that she could possibly just through sheer force of will convert bats. Something that we, we have an embarrassment of in Boston. You know, we have too many bats. But she felt she could convert that into something that, you know, there's always a potential deficit in. Gas. 
she didn't uh, prepare the bats in any way, though. She and just she prepared them. She opened up the bag a little bit so none could get out before she put them in the gas tank and said, get yourselves ready, I'm putting you in the gas tank now. So they were well and truly prepared for what was going on. Not one of those bats were under any illusion that they weren't going in a gas tank this morning. I I meant, uh, by prepared, I meant processed into a a liquid that the intake of my vehicle engine would be able to utilize. No, no, she she didn't turn the bats into gasoline. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. Okay, uh, let's get back down to earth. She she pushed each individual bat, a small like a fruit bat, uh, pushed them into the gas tank through the the little hole, uh, popped each one in, and and you know I was asking her, I was like, what? How how did these? How do the bats make the cars go? And she she just kind of tapped her nose and went, you'll see. So she popped them all in, closed the gas thing, and, and tried to start the car. You know, she had to jimmy the window open subtly. And by that, I mean she had a crowbar. Um, I don't know why she went for the windshield. I said, you, you're better off with a passenger side window or a driver side window, and then do the lock. But she went, no, 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 this is quicker. Smashed in the windshield, crumbled in through that way. She is limber. She she moves like a spider. Um, sat in the driver's seat, uh, hot-wired the car. Uh, she's very good at that, by the way. Um, and this whole time, you just sat there no, and no, watched no. her break? Wait, you you didn't just sit there Not and watch the her break time. into the car? I didn't you stand s- there. I didn't. I didn't sit there the whole time i had craig bring me a deck chair halfway through so i, I was only sat for half of it you were just you just allowed her to destroy the windshield of my car after filling the gas tank with bats no 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 you d- destroyed the windshield of caitlin's car she oh did, she did oh, the Jesus windshield Christ, Jim. She, well she did the windshield and the back window of conrad's <laughs> Wonderful. That's that's great. She smashed the but... windshield of Conrad's car, crawled in through, climbed over the driver's seat into the back, smashed the back window, crawled out of that, ran back around, and then crawled in back through the windshield. She said she uh, hadn't done her exercises this morning, so she did a lap. Uh, anyway, cars didn't work. Imagine that. Well, I, you know, I think what happened, because there was gas in there, it should have still w- worked regardless of whether or not there were bats in there. We've surmised that the bats, with impressive swiftness, drank all the gasoline. So you down whatever gas was in there, um, take the money out of petty cash. Either way, didn't work. She said at that point, I thought it would just work. And you knew the whole time, well, obviously you're a human with logic that bats can't power a car. Well, look at it from my perspective. When Miley Cyrus talks about something that she truly believes in, like she sounds like she knows what she's talking about. You know, logically, as an adult, I'm s- stood there thinking, no bat has ever fueled a car. But the way she put it, when she tapped her nose and said, you'll see, seemed legit. I assumed she'd done the science, uh, and it turns out she had done no science. In fact, she was more than likely basing her beliefs off magic. That is not a shocker. Sorcery and the like. Jim, we've been here before with Miley, and we have the protocol written down in the book. You're not to let her engage in experiments. We can't get anybody... Having the impression she has a mind of her own that functions. Well, here's the thing. She saw the Mad Max trilogy because she wanted to watch the new one and wanted to be caught up on the story. I told her she could probably follow just that one. But she watched all three, got um, to the end of Beyond Thunderdome, and then got very, very worried that one day there'd be no fuel. And she's like, we've got a before, before raving like gangs of bandits start scouring the Australian desert, forcing civilians to hand over their gasoline, we need to replace it with a more renewable energy source. And she obviously thought bats, that's where her mind goes. I mean, my logic here is that eventually she will use bats for things so many times that like a thousand monkeys with a thousand typewriters, she will stumble upon a use for bats that isn't 
be a bat. Right, but how many times do we have to suffer the consequences of Miley's experimentation? Because I don't know if you recall or not the time that Miley Cyrus decided that the bats would be useful as coat hangers. Yeah, yeah. Or the bat sandwiches. But, well, we, we may Craig finish those off. But the, the point is, Jim, you can't keep encouraging her. In fact, you shouldn't even be listening to her. Yeah, I mean, you really, you really need to take better control of these situations, Jim. Unless, Jim, are these your ideas? What? Have you been giving Miley bats and feeding her? Not the bats, the ideas? The ideas and the bats. You've been doing both. Great. Yeah, she she likes their flavors. I mean, Jim, if you have a bat problem in your house, you can just tell us. Yeah, I mean, we can get someone to go and deal with the bats. You don't just have to collect them and foist them off on Miley Cyrus. I mean, if she's willing to buy them, I understand that. But could we find possibly less damaging ideas to give her for what to do with the bats you're selling her? I mean, I'd even take the bat sandwiches again. Over this. Yeah, I'd take, I'd take the bat sandwiches and, you know, still be able to drive home from work. Yeah, sure, you gotta stop and hit each rest stop along the way, but you make it home in comfort and style, not- You said rest stop. I did. Why? I just remembered something. Don't go into the bathroom. They're not my lizards. So, uh, on to other business. Um, uh, First of all, congratulations, Caitlin, hmm? on the uh, morale exercise that we did uh, last week. Everybody really responded, like, very positively to the whole affair. Um, kudos. I, I didn't even think you could get him. Color me. Um, wait, I'm sorry. Uh, thank, thank you, first off. But what, uh, what initiative are you talking about? Which one? Where you got... Uh, President Barack Obama to come to the offices and, and inspire the troops, so to speak. Oh, oh dear Lord, that went well. I think it went really well. Everybody's Incredible. real positive. Well, yeah, I mean that was. Um, I mean you two knew that you two were in on this, right? You you knew that this was. Well, we knew that you were making arrangements to to have Obama come, and that we did. I mean, we didn't think we didn't think you'd get him. But you really came through. Are you yeah, guys? I mean, I thought you were going to get like a stand-in, get like an, an, one of the other actors on our books or someone to come in and, and pretend to be Obama, um, like a look-alike or, or an impersonator, like, like, you know. But but to get the man himself in the flesh, I'm still, I'm starstruck. And I don't get starstruck very often. Okay, well, Jim, I know you're a little um, dense with this kind of stuff, but Conrad, I... I could have sworn that you would have picked up on this. Picked up on what? This wasn't a morale booster. This was an office prank. I mean, I thought you two were in on this. No. You're, you're meaning to tell me you mm. you didn't rec you didn't recognize him? I, yeah, I recognized him as the leader of the free world. The Potters. That was Michael Sarah. What? Get out! I can't. You guys must be fucking with me. That was I called up Michael Sarah and asked him to come in and pose as Obama as a joke. You're telling me nobody got the joke? Are you kidding? Everybody thought it was Obama. He wore a tie. Yeah, but he's a skinny white boy. I mean, he's. Are you sure? <laughs> okay, Ob do you, you two know you. Do you need me to show you a picture of Obama? Is is this what where the confusion is? Oh no, I know, I know what President Barack Obama looks like. I know what Michael Sarah looks. I think. I think I know what Michael Sarah looks like. He's the skinny, white, unassuming kid from pretty much every movie in the past ten years. The son of a bitch. This. This is like the sixth or seventh time that I've been convinced that Michael Sarah was someone else. Yeah. How does he do I that? I have it's... no idea, but I, it's it's all. He is so good at it. Like I'm not even mad. No. I honestly thought that was Barack Obama the Potters, and it turns out it was Michael Sarah, star of stage and screen, again. So that last time he came in, and I was convinced it was David Bowie, and then, no, no, it's him. It, it's not Mr. T either. He does a fantastic Mr. T. And he just comes in, and just, oh, hi, I'm Mr. T. Yeah. He's wearing a hoodie. 
it's it's just it's really really uncanny and that's i mean that's basically what he did went around the office shook everybody's hand hi i'm obama yeah think- hi i'm obama and i i mean i didn't think anything of of it i didn't i didn't I didn't realize it was Michael Sarah in the least. He's just, he, he puts off whatever he wants to put off. Thinking, it's a, a, amazing. Thinking back now that the, the, the veil has been torn from mine eyes, like now I'm seeing Michael Sarah. Yeah. Whereas every time I remembered back, I saw Obama. <laughs> but now I can see him there, not even doing a, a comical stutter. He wasn't even trying to sound like Obama. It was just, oh, hey, oh, hey, I'm Obama. How's it going? Wow. Only when you, only when it's pointed out. Uh, do you see it? Yep, yep, I see it. I see it now. He's right oh. there. He's so, so thin and live, like a, like a baboon. Oh. Unbelievable. That's Sarah. Uh, well, um, now, do we tell the rest of the office? Because, I mean, I think everyone's actually working harder. Well, yeah, I mean, no one stopped talking about it, and everyone's saying they're doing it for the press now so we should probably just keep it going um, you're saying you want me to bring him back maybe i mean this worked last I, are you telling me that the last time you did this it was him as well when when you brought in odin lord of asgard well yeah but that was a costume party jim that that was clearly co- people dressed up in costumes and it was like it was michael sarah the whole time yeah that's because we all thought it was odin are king you... of the gods are you fucking serious? Well, he had his dog with him. Slip near the six-legged dog. And we were like, isn't that supposed to be a horse? And he was like, no, oh, no, no, it was a... It's a dog. Doing the impression of him now, I realize it was Michael Sarah the whole time. Yeah, but he did have that eye patch, which was a good touch. That, that really sold it. He had the eye patch on in a t-shirt that had I am Odin written on it in permanent marker. So right. that sold me. Yeah. I mean, you aren't going to wear a t-shirt saying, I am Odin, if you're not Odin. Or apparently, as we've just found out, Michael Cera, star of stage and screen, and the social network. I mean, now that we know, like, definitively that Michael Cera has this sort of glamour about him, uh, we should start exploiting that more. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's a modern-day succubus, and we need to really work with that. I mean, he's been coming to these... I've been inviting him to these parties, uh, you know, as... To, as a joke, this is. I don't think he understands that he's really trying to be the person that we're asking him to be. I mean, I don't even know how he'd take this. Well, why even tell him? We'll just keep having him to show up to things and just cont- and continue to. Yeah, it, I mean, I hate to use the word exploit, but I really can't find a better one than exploit him. I mean, I'm fair game. Michael, Michael, yeah, it's Jim. Um... Yeah, like, what are you doing next week? No- nothing. Fantastic. Uh, how's your Irish accent? Yeah. No, 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 no. Just want you to come in, tell everyone you're Bono, and just tell everyone that I signed you on. All right, mate. All right, cheers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I loved you in all those films you did, too. Yeah, bye. Praise in one of his fucking films. Uh, sorry, sorry, I had to make a private phone call. Yeah, we were here. No, you weren't. So, gentlemen, I have a um, a fresh new cause to bring to the table. Something that hasn't been done before. It is a new opportunity for us to be able to market something for the children. People love children. Oh, yeah, people love children. Children There's are no, fantastic. There is no better way to swing public perception in your favor than a child Mm -hmm. i think they're brilliant exactly they're lovable um they have sad circumstances and as a marketing company it is our job to bring light these issues with children from around the world so this is a, a worldly cause not just focused on the united states but children all over the the place um, and we have a sponsor. We have a celebrity sponsor, Winona Ryder. In fact, it was her idea. Wow. Okay, that's that's legit enough. That works. So we have a big name to tie to this cause. You know, we have we have the money, we have the budget in our charity funds, of course. So, um, you know, I think it's I think we're good to go. Okay, so <clears throat> this is like uh, 
underprivileged kids, you know, uh, sick and dying kids, like a that sort of thing. Yeah, right. It, yeah, you could say that. It's um, you know how you said there are underprivileged children in this world that need help. The the sick and the dying Food. ones, the well, the little manky bald ones. Yeah. Yeah, they're the they're the typical recipients of these sorts of uh, charitable offerings. The the people who have not. No, nothing more tragic than a child who's not going to get to experience the fullness of life, but to to bring a bright moment into it that they can take with them. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't want them in my house, but I don't begrudge them uh, a small amount of money every month out of my bank account that I wouldn't miss. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Well, these these aren't those kids. Okay. These are children that have everything that they could ever want. Huh. These are children that, you know, crave material things and have them. Right. So so rather than children that have nothing and making their dreams come true, this is children who have everything and then giving them slightly more stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, normally there's a lot of good press with the former idea, the established idea. Uh, what's Winona's thinking behind this sort of giving rich and presumably healthy children that none of them are dying? Well, yeah, but you're, I don't think you're thinking about this the right way, Jim. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. we have an opportunity here to not just expand, but open a charity market that doesn't exist. I mean, we can be forerunners in this. Right. We can but break ground. I, I think... I think there's this, we might be running aground of one of those rare situations where there's a, a reason it doesn't exist in the marketplace. Because, I mean, charity for people who have everything seems to run counter to the idea of charity. But then again, I mean, this opens up a challenging opportunity. We we could indeed answer the question, what do you get for the, the, the boy and the girl with everything? All I'm thinking is Prometheus Blu-rays. R- really? I mean, I'm thi- Children are into Prometheus Blu-rays? They can't get enough of them. That's one thing I've learned um, studying children in our focus groups. Prometheus Blu-rays, and to a lesser extent DVDs, uh, there is no amount too many for a child. This is the the big thing they do now. You know, this is the iPhone generation. Uh, they have so much now that they've almost seemed to have glommed arbitrarily onto uh, some other uh, collectible commodity. Um, just just the I guess the first thing that one particularly influential child saw, uh, which turned out to be a Prometheus Blu-ray. They swap them uh, in in schoolyards, um, just swapping them back and forth. Back and forth, but they're they're all the same thing. They're not. There's nothing inherently collectible or unique about each individual Prometheus DVD or Blu-ray. Try telling that to an eight-year-old who's showing you a Prometheus Blu-ray and telling you she's got a shiny one. Is it shiny? No more than any other one. But it's a rare one, according to them. It's worth. One shiny Prometheus Blu-ray is worth at least two Prometheus Blu-rays, in, according to the schoolyard economy. And Conrad, I think you're missing the the point here, which is that these it makes these children happy. Mm-hmm. You know, these rich children who are truly poor in their souls. You know, we can bring them something that will make their days brighter: a goldfish, a six hundred dollar pet Shih Tzu. I mean, these are things that their parents just don't, frankly, don't have time to give them. Mm-hmm. A hundred gold-plated bicycles. No, I, I, A merkin. I can certainly see... Made with love. I can certainly see the merit in bringing joy to any child's life, uh, provided that it either serves to enhance the public image of someone else who, you know, pays us to enhance their public image, or there's some other profit involved and we're i have a hard time imagining we're going to get a lot of public donations for a program that uh just 
is giving Prometheus Blu-rays to rich kids. Well, look at it this way. I watch a lot of right-wing uh, television. I listen to a lot of, of, of right-wing talk radio. Um, because I'm a bad person in my heart and soul. And according to the pundits there, the rich truly are the second-class citizens of America. Uh, they are the most maligned, the most unfairly treated, the most heavily taxed. These guys can't get a break. So the least we could do is 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 help out their children. Mm -hmm. I mean, comrade, just because 1% of the children in this world are rich beyond our wildest dreams, it doesn't make them any less human than anyone else. And let's not forget, that's 1%. They truly are America's minority. Gosh, you know, you really do make some excellent points. I mean, nobody is, is more marginalized than, than the most wealthy among us, right? Exactly, they are the most wealthy. We're already singling them out as different. You know, I, I, I was wrong. I was wrong. This is a good cause. This is this is a great idea. I can't believe it came from Winona Ryder, but it's a great idea. Well, she cares. She cares deeply. And she hates poor people. Fish Shark Marketing is Jim Sterling, Conrad Zimmerman, and Caitlin Cook. Theme music by Ben Rama. Segway music by Alazar Chan. Our editor is Nick Malone. Get more episodes and learn how to help support the show at FistShark.com. Follow us on Twitter at FistShark for more of our exploits. Complaints can be forwarded via email to FistSharkMarketing at AOL.com. And remember, the difference between marketing and propaganda is... Goodbye. <laughs>